It was a dark and stormy night. Actually, it, it is a dark and stormy night here, and that, that sort of gets me in the storytelling mood. Uh, so, to start things off, as you guys probably realize, it's been a little over a month since I've made a video, and I have no real good excuse there other than just busy and tired. Uh, I've been working more on fitness and, and stuff like that in personal life and dealing with family stuff, so don't really want to go into that. But the last time we spoke, I think one of the things that I mentioned was that I was going to be going to NVIDIA's GPU Tech Conference. That happened, actually, at the end of March. But one of the coolest things that has ever happened to me happened to me at NVIDIA's Tech Conference. And it, it's silly to even say it this way, but I was given the opportunity while I was there to drive the Tesla Model S. Now you might be asking, why would they have a Tesla Model S at the NVIDIA Tech Conference, and why would I be given the opportunity to drive it there? That is because the center console, the core when you're sitting there in it, the thing that you interact with, it's a big Tegra-powered computer. I'll be entirely honest, I don't know all the specifics about it. I know it runs a version of Linux. I managed to get that out of the guy from Tesla who was sitting in the passenger seat while I was driving it. I know that it is a Tegra-based processor. I believe it's a Tegra 3 that it's running on top of. Hopefully, newer versions of the Tesla will come with newer versions of the chip. Hopefully, the K1, because that is going to be a ridiculously awesome chip. But as you can see here, I've got a little bit of footage from my experience there, and I just sort of wanted to share it with you. And unlike the video I made before when I was at CES of the BMW i3, we didn't actually get to do this one alone. Uh, Jimmy McGee, the guy from XDA who I was there with, was my camera person, as he normally is. And unfortunately, like I said, we didn't get to take the car out on our own. It was the two of us, and then a guy from Tesla, and a guy who's actually a marketing person for NVIDIA. So there were four people crammed into this car, and there was tons and tons of room in it. But that meant we didn't get to take the car out and take as much time as we would like with it. With the i3, we actually had some time to stop and take some footage and do, you know, drive-by shots and stuff like that. With this, we kind of had to do everything on the fly. So a lot of the footage that you're seeing here is like from the back seat with, with Jimmy with the camera over my shoulder looking at stuff. Now, I will say, this was an absolutely beautiful car. They had the black one and the red one there, and I would have preferred to have driven the red one just because red car, you gotta love it. But when it came up on my turn, it was, you know, we've got other stuff to do. Here's the black car, do you want to drive it? Yeah, twist my arm, yeah. But as you can see from some of this video, it has this huge, I believe it's a 17 inch center console monitor, which has stuff like a built-in camera you can use for rear view. It has built-in navigation, built-in 3G that you can use for web browsing and of course for navigation. You can tether it into your phone, which unfortunately I didn't get the opportunity to do, but you can use that to make phone calls and everything like that. And there was even a point where, like I said, the navigation you can have in that center console, it's this really large monitor that's kind of out of your line of sight. So while it's great to have it there, especially if you've got other people in the car to help you out, there was a way to get it to transmit over to right in front of the driver. So it would be on the, the dash right in front of you. So there was a point, and I'm probably showing you the video right now, when we were heading back and the, the guy from Tesla was like, oh yeah, let's go ahead and get the GPS up so you know where you're going. He hit a button, suddenly it was right in front of me. And I was able to say, you know, it was able to say, turn the next right here. So really the way that technology is used in this car is just absolutely awesome. And on top of that, as the guy mentions in the video, the battery in this car, which is really what is lacking in a lot of electric vehicles, is at a minimum 200 mile range. And they're looking, the, the higher end model, which is only slightly more expensive, has a 280 mile range. That is just absolutely ridiculous. That's not road trip distance, but realistically, and if I remember correctly, if you use one of their superchargers, which they have placed at specific points along the road, uh, you can actually stop for half an hour, charge up your car, keep right on going. Uh, they just did the first cross-country drive, and I think it was a Tesla Model S they did it in, stopping at these supercharger stations along the way. So as those sorts of things become more prevalent, it will become feasible to actually take this car, which is a really, really expensive car, uh, but use it for longer trips, longer treks. For the grand majority of trips that I actually take to and from work, it's really only about 30 miles each way. And then other than that, you know, I'll, I'll go to town, I'll go visit my parents or my wife's parents. Those trips are a little bit longer. Tri trips to visit one set of parents or the other are usually a couple hundred miles, but still probably well within the reason of, of falling into that same amount of distance as the car would actually be able to travel. Would I be willing to travel that kind of distance on a battery? 
I don't know if I'm 100% confident in it yet, but I'm definitely getting there. I, I watched them drive these cars around for quite a while and I kept checking back and they were using the same two cars the entire day and they never had to actually change them out. I stopped the guy at one point during the test drive and said, you know, does this really have this kind of a range or are you guys swapping out the cars after so often? He said, no, this is just one, two, you know, two cars that we're gonna use through the entire day for all of the people that are gonna drive them. And we drove them around for several miles. And actually at one point, they, they allowed me to take it out on the interstate. I'm not sure they did that for, for all the people, mainly just the, the press people. And uh, while I was out on the interstate, he said, gun it. So that was definitely a lot of fun. Uh, to be able to take this electric car, which actually I did the same kind of thing when I was driving the i3, the, the Tesla had a little more get up and go to it. I only got it up to about 80 before we got to a point where it was, all right, I have to pull back off the interstate now. Uh, but still, it had a lot of get up and go to it, especially, you know, you don't expect that out of an electric engine. But anyway, I've kind of gotten off topic. I've kind of gotten into a rambling area here. It was an amazingly fun thing to drive. It was a great experience and I was very thankful for the opportunity. So thank you to NVIDIA for inviting us out there. Thank you for making this happen and allowing us to drive the Tesla. And actually, as I mentioned earlier, you're able to pair your phone to the Tesla. So if you're looking for something to listen to while you're paired your phone up to the Tesla, you might want to check out an audiobook on audible.com. I'm currently actually listening to the third book in the Song of Ice and Fire series, A Storm of Swords, and absolutely loving it. Roy Dotrice at two times speed is a whole lot of fun to listen to. If you're interested in checking out audible.com, you can get a free month, which includes one free audiobook of your choosing by heading over to audibletrial.com slash twill. I'll have a link to that down at the top of the video description if you'd like to check that out helps me out just a little bit. But you know what, other than that, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed the little footage that I've had of the car and of me driving the car. It was an awful lot of fun for me to do. And hopefully I'll be coming back at you with some more video content here in the very near future. I've got a load of product reviews coming up because I'm completely inundated with things to talk about. So thank you as always for watching and I'll see you again in the very near future. Bye guys.